Following a decision against suspending Russia's membership on Friday by the International Paralympic Committee, it looks that the nation will not be completely barred from the Paralympics in Paris next year. The IPC reported on X, the social media website that replaced Twitter, that members rejected a motion to completely suspend Russia for breaches of its constitutional membership obligations by a vote of 74 to 65. Thirteen more members chose not to vote. Later on Friday, there will be another vote on whether to partially suspend Russia. That would imply that although Russia sends athletes to the Paralympics, they must compete as neutral athletes without bearing the flag. Similar votes were anticipated for Belarus, a friend of Russia. A week after Russian troops invaded Ukraine in March 2022, athletes from Russia and Belarus landed in Beijing for the Winter Paralympics. A day before the opening ceremony, they were excluded. After voting against suspending the nation's membership, the International Paralympic Committee looks to have spared Russia from being completely barred from the Paralympics in Paris the following year. According to Reuters, men in a destitute Cuban neighborhood have been persuaded to fight for Russia by using WhatsApp. According to Yamadli Cervantes, a seamstress from the rural community of La Federal, her husband Enrique Gonzalez abandoned their home to move to Russia. The seamstress claimed that her husband was having financial difficulties and had made the decision to enlist in the Russian army in order to combat Ukraine, according to Reuters. The bricklayer received payment in the amount of 200,000 rubles, $2,040, days after he left on July 19, and now his wife is taking advantage of their newfound cash by getting a new phone, a refrigerator, and a sewing machine, according to Reuters. According to the Cuban authorities, 17 persons were detained for their alleged involvement in a human trafficking operation that recruited Cubans to fight for Russia. The seamstress told Reuters that her spouse informed her one day, Mommy, I just can't take it anymore, after he realized he could not go another day without food. Since June, at least three males have reportedly fled the 100-meter gravel road where Ms. Cervantes resides, according to the report. According to the regional governor, a drone strike from Ukraine shattered windows in the roof of an administrative building in Bryansk, a region in southern Russia, and injured one person. In a post on the messaging service Telegram, the governor, Alexander Bogomaz, said that the incident took place in the town of Trubchevsk. According to a previous report by Bogomaz, three homes were damaged when Ukrainian soldiers shelled a settlement in the area. As the nation commemorates one year since it annexed Donetsk, Lugansk, Zaporizhia, and Kherson in September of last year, Russia's former president issued a warning that Moscow may invade more Ukrainian areas. Dmitry Medvedev, who currently holds the position of deputy chair of Russia's Security Council, told RT that the special military operation would continue until the Nazi rule in Kiev was completely overthrown. We're going to win. Furthermore, Russia will see the creation of more new regions. Any of the annexations that Russia does not fully control are subject to a Ukrainian counteroffensive. The Ukrainian Ministry of Defense has asked everyone to observe a minute of silence tomorrow morning at 9 in honor of the victims. They announced on X that a new anniversary called Day of Defenders will take place on October 1st. While the war-torn nation's leaders ordered the evacuation of a targeted infrastructure site, Vladimir Putin's forces conducted drone and missile operations overnight that targeted Ukraine's eastern and southern regions. Russia's soldiers allegedly launched a swarm of Shahid drones from the Crimea and the Black Sea in a nocturnal offensive on Saturday, according to the Ukrainian Air Force. As the Air Force issued a warning about the potential threat of ballistic missiles, one of the strikes hit an infrastructure site in the Venetia region. Apart from the immediate region where the strike occurred, authorities asked residents to remain in shelters and stated that a mass evacuation was not yet required. According to the town's website, Vassal Polishchik, chief of administration, at this time there is no need for a general evacuation, aside from the immediate area around the site of the hit. According to Seriai Melnik, the commander of the Kharkiv garrison, 90% of the Ukrainian air defenses in Kharkiv were destroyed in the first few days of the major attack. A Ukrainian minister, Anton Doroshenko, shared an excerpt from an interview where he shares how the Russians knew the precise coordinates of the air defense locations.